World champion and winner of the Grand Prix final, American figure skater Ilya Malinin, won the ISU Challenger Series Lombardia Trophy, which is taking place in Bergamo, Italy. Fifth place went to the student of the honored coach of Russia, Terry Tubbards, Georgian figure skater Nikki Igitz. Vice champion of the last European Championship, Alexander Selevko, representing Estonia, is in ninth place. Reigning US champion Amber Glenn won the ISU Challenger Series Lombardia Trophy 2024 in Bergamo. Glenn beat three-time world champion Sakamoto Kaori by just over two points after the short program, but second place on that day and in the overall standings went to another American, Sarah Everhart. Sakamoto opened her new season free skate with a double axel to all that jazz, and a fall on the final triple loop cost her points, while an earlier triple lots also received negative execution marks. The Beijing 2022 bronze medalist posted a 126.41 for a total of 199.94. Georgia's 2023 European champion Anastasia Gubanova placed third in the free skate, but was unable to overtake the Japanese in the overall standings. Skating to audio machines I will find you, Glenn calmed any pre-skating nerves with a triple axel. And while her jumps weren't quite as smooth in the second half of the program, the 24-year-old did enough to record her second personal best in two days, with a score of 137.18. The career-high total of 212.89 points signals what could be a breakout season for the skater, who finished 10th at the World Championships in Montreal in March. Everhart came desperately close to breaking her personal best in the free skate from last year's Cranberry Cup, but her 132.77 points were enough to break the 200-point barrier for the first time, with a total of 21090. As the figure skating season heats up, weight eating disorder at issues continue to be hot topics in the sport. A surprise guest speaker at the Nebelhorn Trophy in Germany was Natalie Tashlerova, who competes for the Czech Republic in ice dancing with her brother Philip. Experts agree that Tashlerova is a top-notch skater. Perhaps, after the departure of the American Madison Hubble, Natalie has no equal in gliding. But this does not save the Czech from bullying. She is regularly, and rudely, reproached for the peculiarities of her figure, and it seems that even the judges withhold marks for her and her brother for the same reason. After the rhythm dance in Oberstdorf, Natalie could not stand it and told Maya Bagrian Siva what trouble such criticism led to. This is a very frank and important monologue not only about Tashlerova, but also about today's figure skating in general. In the summer, I had a health crisis, primarily a psychological one. I face an eating disorder, and now I understand that it is wrong to remain silent about this. It all started four years ago, when my dad died. It was unbearable, and I almost stopped eating from stress. It's not that I did it on purpose, it's just that depression does not choose where to hit you. The first difficulties with food appeared right then. And last year I came across an article a huge piece from a Russian publication, where they compared me and Diana Davis. Then at the tournament in Bratislava, Philip and I lost to them in Gleb Smulkin. The article discussed what is more important power skating or beauty, and it was obvious that beauty is not about me. There was also talk about my excess weight and how I am greatly overrated as a figure skater. In general, it was not pleasant. I started receiving personal messages on social networks. You need to lose weight, a cow on ice, poor guy, she will break his back you read such things and your hands drop. And they write from anonymous accounts people from the internet do not have the courage to say this openly. It broke me. I began to think that I should quit figure skating, all sorts of thoughts came into my head. The whole season passed like a swing. I was very emotionally tossed. And then in the spring I realized. Enough, I can't do this anymore, I'm tired of being unhappy all the time. The worst thing is that I am not the only one who experiences such feelings. I have many friends in figure skating who go through the same thing, but are embarrassed to talk about it. Our sport is such that everyone is used to seeing a shiny rapper. Cute girls with holiday makeup and in beautiful outfits. And these girls are always smiling. And no one suspects what is hidden behind this window. I am not yet ready to speak as frankly as possible about what I went through. But I have definitely said goodbye to rose-colored glasses, and have become much more sober in my outlook on life and our sport. Yes, I do not meet the standard of a classic figure skater. I do not weigh 40 kilograms, I am not compact and not miniature. But I have accepted it. I am like this I cannot be any other. I started working with a psychologist who specializes in the problem of eating disorders.
I feel much better, but most importantly, I realize that health is above all else. Now I am learning to love my body, my legs, my figure again. I was always terribly ashamed of my arms that they were too athletic, not feminine. At school, boys teased me that my arms were thicker than theirs, and such words are forever imprinted in my head. Now I feel better, I even started dressing differently. Before, I hid myself under clothes. The baggier, the better. Yes, I still love oversized clothes, but I choose them because I like them, and not to hide my body. I am wearing dresses, shorts and short skirts again this was oh so difficult for me. This summer, for the first time in several years, I went to the beach in a bikini, and it was a real victory. Yes, not everything is perfect there are better days, there are also black ones like before, but it seems that I am learning to be happy again. I am learning to take care of myself and trying to remember that I have something to be proud of after all, I competed at the Olympics, and that is quite a lot. For the first time in a long time, when asked how are you, I can honestly answer great, instead of closing my eyes and muttering okay. I wake up and happily think about the training ahead. It seems that I love figure skating again and accept myself on the ice as I am. With food, too, things are gradually getting better. Yes, there is a lot of work ahead, I am moving forward in small steps, but I know that I am going in the right direction. I can already eat ice cream, but I am still careful with other products because of all this, I have accumulated a bunch of stomach problems, so I need to act carefully. In such moments, the people who surround me are very important. It is so important to have faith in you and for you to be able to trust your loved ones. I now have several new specialists working with me both in physiotherapy and in the gym, and I feel so much love and unconditional acceptance from everyone. I am not afraid to open up to them and work without looking back at external instructions. For the first time in my life, I go to the gym for myself to be healthy, and not to please someone. I work on my body because I need it, and not strangers. It always seemed to me that as soon as I lose a few kilograms, everyone will finally leave me alone. I was not thinking about myself, but about how others wanted to see me. And it is also important to hear that someone needs you. When I ended up in the hospital during the summer training camp in the Czech Republic, Masha Kazakova, figure skater of the Georgian national team, came to see me. I was hospitalized because my body could not handle it, digestive problems had been accumulating for too long. I completely fell apart and was at an emotional low I did not understand how to live on. And Masha said that it was because of me that she decided not to quit sports after breaking up with her partner. It turns out that it is so important to know that you can inspire someone. You immediately feel stronger and from somewhere the desire to fight appears. At one time, the American figure skater Caitlin Howick became such an example for me. She was one of the first to raise this topic and was not afraid to be vulnerable. The fact that she spoke so openly about what girls go through in figure skating is priceless. And I am also inspired by gymnasts. I am a huge fan of artistic gymnastics, especially Simone Biles. As a child, I did gymnastics, and quite seriously up until the age of 13, I combined it with figure skating. I have an athletic body type, and I know that my figure resembles a gymnast. The other day, Simone posted a photo of a new tattoo with the phrase made in heaven. For me, this phrase is about all of us and about self-love. I need to learn to value myself, and Biles is my main role model in this. I have a beautiful, strong body, I don't want to be ashamed of it anymore. I have accepted how I look and who I am not without the help of specialists. And I want to tell girls around the world. Don't be afraid to ask for help. This is not a joke, your health is more important than anything else in the world. From the author. It seemed important to me that Natalie's monologue was published in a Russian publication, since the trigger for her crisis was an article in Russian. Moreover, Tashlarova's example is not unique. Many people in Russian figure skating face ridicule and criticism for being overweight. Coaches, TV commentators, spectators and even parents Russian figure skaters have no shortage of criticism. It's just that not everyone can muster the courage to talk about it as Tashlarova did. In gratitude for her frankness, I would like to show Natalie that online comments can be different caring and supportive. Yes, figure skaters often say that they don't read what is written about them on the internet. But believe me, in reality, few succeed in this. A harsh phrase from an anonymous user sometimes costs them many years of fighting depression.